the Hall Around the World presented by Crushing Comics. I'm your host, Crisis with a K. I'm here around the world from many of you watching in Wellington, New Zealand. And when I want to get new comics into my collection, they've got to join me from around the world somewhere because comics usually are not born here in New Zealand. And boy, do I have one that got hauled around the world today. It is the Infinity Crusade Omnibus. It is a big honker and it comes with a little bit of a story. As you have heard, if you've watched some of my other haul around the world, I originally, towards the end of 2020, was not pre-ordering my books. I just was used to getting them as they came out from IST. And I recently switched to pre-ordering them. But Marvel Omnibuses and Marvel Masterworks have a six-month lead time. So there was a three-month period where I did not have the chance to pre-order far enough ahead of time to get the omnibuses into my orders, and I still had to play the roulette on the day they came out to get them. But this one, you know, it's a huge Marvel event. It's the third of three omnibuses. And I thought, surely they printed enough of this that it's going to last longer than a day. And so I was waiting for another book to come out. I think I was waiting for the New Mutant omnibus. I forget which one came first or second. But I was like, I need to just wait a few days and then I can place my order. So I put this in my cart. I was ready to order from IST. And I think what would have been my final IST order. I came back to my cart and it was gone because it sold out really quickly. But here's the thing. Only this main cover sold out quickly. The alternate cover, the cover of Moon Knight and Spider-Man as part of this by uh, Platt did not sell out. That's this. It's on the back of the wrapped cover art here. But here's the thing. Is there anything about this cover that screams Infinity Crusade to you? What is infinite about this cover? I ask you. Nothing. Nothing. I actually like this cover. I'm a fan of this Moon Knight run, but, and I was willing to maybe get an alternate cover, but it didn't have to be this one. But I was like, no, I'm not ordering the alternate cover. I want the original cover. So I wasn't going to get it from IST. It was sold out everywhere because it was one of those books that like really, you know, hit, hit the market and originally, well, and immediately sold out. So the hunt was on. So I looked everywhere. I looked at some New Zealand comic book sites to see if they had it because that's how I got my New Mutants in that same week. And we've talked about that. They didn't have it. I looked at like some bigger stores that I knew would ship securely to here. They didn't have it. Amazon had it, but I, Amazon, you don't know how your package is going to be. You can just get it loose in a box, you know, and it'll just be sliding across the box, across the whole Pacific Ocean as it gets hauled around the world. So I was like, I don't want to do that if I don't have to. So I found it on this site. It's this little bookseller site. I mean, I guess it's not that little, but it's not one of like the top, let's say, four hits in New Zealand for buying books online, but they had it. They claimed it was in stock. It was going to get to me. It was, I remember this was like at the beginning of January and it was supposed to get here by February. So it was like a month. And I was like, well, that makes sense. The world is on lockdown. You know, things are moving slowly. I'm not in a hurry as long as I get it. And it's, and they said in stock, because when you're buying a book like this, you can't trust that it's in stock, especially if it's like something that really shorted or that was sold out already on the direct market. They might think they're going to get more copies, but like they're not going to get more copies. So if there's a book that's really hot and you go to a site and they're like, and you're like, oh, they're selling it. And then you see that like six to eight weeks waiting on stock in our warehouse. They don't really have that book. And there's probably no more of that book to get to them. But I ordered it. So the end of February rolled around. And then the end of March rolled around. And then the end of April rolled around and the book was nowhere to be found. And I kept checking the page and it was like, it's shipping. The shipper has it. The shipper had a number. And then there was like no update. Finally, I went out to my mailbox one day and I find this. I wish I kept it. It's just for the, sh the comedy of it. Um, I found this white envelope. In fact, I, I have footage that I have of me handling the white envelope that um, that just was like, I messed up the frame rate, so I can't use the video, but I did take some footage of it. And maybe we should take it out of this wrapper before I tell the rest of the story and, and why it's in this wrapper to begin with. It was so flimsy. It wasn't even bubble wrap. It was like one of those plasticky envelopes that like looks like it was structured and a bubbly structure, but there's no actual like poppable bubbles in it. And that was it. There was no padding, no anything. So I was like, oh no, this took three plus months to get here. Who knows how many mail streams it tumbled through. And I, I was just expecting it to be a complete catastrophe. So when I get a book brand new that maybe has been roughed up or even has it, I have my like multi-point check that I do, usually with the dust jacket on, but this it's just so big, it's easier to handle um, with the dust jacket off because I can get a firmer grip on it. So um, I basically start with all four corners. So we do have a bump on this corner that actually has smashed the paper a little bit at the top. We have a very, very light bump on this corner. You can barely see it. And the bottom corners turned out fine. Now, when I look at a bumped corner, 
Um, basically, I, I'm trying to look at, you know, these are basically end boards are just cardboard wrapped in paper, right? So I'm trying to assess if it's just the paper that got like a little bit wrinkled with the bump or if the cardboard actually took a dent. Like imagine if you had a cardboard box and you just wrap some paper around it and then you like banged on the desk a couple of times. Chances are the cardboard didn't get bent at all and the paper just looks crinkled. And so sometimes you can kind of just smooth out the paper a little bit and it's fine. And this front one that has a little bit of a ding, I think it's actually just a ding to the paper, which I don't care. This back one, it, it definitely took a, a dent. Like I could hinge this if I wanted to break it. Uh, of course I don't. But you know what, in the scheme of things, so then I usually check the top edge to see if it really took a slam there. It's a little bit curled, so it probably got stood up on its head a few times, but nothing that's really gonna show forever that harmed it. And then I look at the bottom edge for the same reason. Of course, the bottom edge is gonna be up against your shelf. Although fun fact, you can put like a little something underneath of um, the pages of a book, the page block, to help support it a little um, because this will meet the shelf a little bit higher than the pages will, of course. But if you do that, you wanna choose something that's acid free. You don't want anything that will leach color from the pages or or whose color will be leached by the pages. Uh, some people use little styrofoam blocks or little post-it notes, but you really gotta be mindful of that. I actually do. I forget what I was using, but I, I determined it was acid free and it wouldn't hurt the books. And so a lot of my books, you know what? I use comic boards. I like got a big stack of comic boards and I just sliced them on the paper slicer and made like little sandwiches out of them and, and put them under. But honestly, for what it went through and how long it was in the mail, it's fine. The dust jacket really took the brunt of that bump. This, this corner is really quite dinged, but you know what? It's a, it's a corner and nobody's going to see it when it's on the shelf. I, as much as I know, we all want perfection for spending like $100 on these books, sometimes one little bump is fine. Uh, but it's up to you. So that's enough about getting the book to here. Probably not gonna order from that website again. Because uh, it ultimately came from the States, I think was the upshot of that story, if I glossed over it, even though it was a New Zealand website and they said they had New Zealand stock, clearly it was shipped from the States. Let's talk about this though, because it's, it's a little unusual. It is the third of three big cosmic events from the early 90s in Marvel. Of course, the first one is Infinity Gauntlet, the second one is Infinity War, and this is Infinity Crusade, primarily written by Jim Starlin. The thing is, the first two, Infinity Gauntlet was really just a six-issue miniseries that had some tie-ins, but it really was mostly that miniseries driving the event, and it tied into a number of books across the line, a lot of times just in one or two issues, sometimes more. Then Infinity War, it was an original six issues, but there were other titles that maybe had some more information that was a little bit more critical to Infinity War. And in both cases, Silver Surfer is among those because Silver Surfer was kind of where the Thanos return was originating. This one is a little bit different because even as it was coming out, it was not just happening in Infinity Crusade. There's like a primary story that runs in Infinity Crusade 1 through 6, also in Warlock Chronicles, also in Warlock and the Infinity Watch. So that's Warlock Chronicles 1 through 5 and Warlock and the Infinity Watch 18 through 22. Now this has already been collected in paperback. I wonder if it's on my shelf down there. Uh, yeah, I got it, I got it. All right, so in paperback, it came out in two, and these two actually collected that other stuff too. So this one had Infinity Crusade 1 through 3, Warlock Chronicles 1 through 3, and Warlock and the Infinity Watch 18 and 19. And this one had Infinity Crusade 4 through 6, Warlock Chronicles 4 and 5, and Infinity Watch 20 through 22. So they are alternating through all three of those. So really, in total, this is a 6, uh, 11, uh, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 issue crossover, opposed to Infinity War, which I have here, which is mostly just Infinity War, but it also has some brief stories from Marvel Comics uh, Presents, and then a few stories from Warlock and the Infinity Watch. So then the next question, of course, is are they collected in the correct order? Now, in the case, I don't know why I'm like investigating Infinity War at this point, but Infinity War ends the Infinity War issues and then it has the Infinity Watch issues as back matter, which is one way that Marvel collects these things. They don't tend to like to split up an event in their, well, I know this is not the topic of this video, but I just have to show you this page, it's real cool. They don't tend to want to split up an event in a book unless explicitly at the time, the, each issue ended by saying, I am a direct crossover, I am continued in blah. And if they don't do that, then they don't tend to want to split it up. And this collection is reflective of that. 
However, Infinity Crusade was a direct crossover. It did explicitly interthread these issues. And so I'm just paging through the trades because it's, it's a little easier to do than to page through that giant omnibus. Um, paging through the trades, they do intersperse the issues from the different series with each other. But, so like Warlock Chronicles is the second issue in this trade, but the first issue in this trade is Infinity Crusade number one. So clearly it's a direct crossover that's interspersed, and I would imagine that they are also the first two issues here. And they are. Oh, table of contents, that's handy. So the running order of this is Infinity Crusade one, Warlock Chronicles one, Warlock and the Infinity Watch 18, Infinity Crusade two, Warlock Chronicles two, and so on, right? But here's the thing. This has tons of other material other than those 16 issues. It has Thor 463 through 467, Iron Man 294 and 295, Avengers West Coast 96 and 97, Dark, Dark Hawk 30 and 31, Cage 17, Alpha Flight 124, 125, and 127, uh, Mark Spectre Moon Knight 57, Silver Server 83 through 85, and Deathlock 28, plus some, but not all of the material in issues of Doctor Strange 54 through 56, Alpha Flight 122 and 123, and 126, Web Spider-Man 104 through 106, because I think they had backup stories, that's why it doesn't have all the material, and Silver Sable in the Wild Pack 16 and 17, and Deathlock 29. So, the question is, are they all in order? And the answer is no. It pretty much does though those whole Infinity Crusade trades, just putting them in their specific order for the first chunk of the book. That is the first 487 pages of this book is just these two trades reproduced in full in the omnibus, right? Then it reproduces all of that other material and it puts it, I have to say, in a pretty solid reading order. And the reason I say that is because it pretty much is in order that the issues were published, except for when the issues absolutely should run into each other. So it starts with four, Thor 463 from June 1993, but actually Thor is also the last issue, Thor 467 from October 1993. So they didn't just gang them up to gang them up. Some of them are ganged up though, because I guess the stories probably continue right one from another. So like Alpha Flight 123 and 124 are together because they're Holy Terror Part 2 and Part 3. Holy Terror Part 1, though, is earlier. So that really tells me, because they're so shuffled up, and they're not explicitly just by their published date, that Alpha Flight Holy Terror Part 3 was in September, but then the next issue is from Doctor Strange, which is from July. So they're not just in date order, they're not just in series order, they're actually in a pretty decent reading order. Honestly, I think this is a good thing. Marvel should do this more. We see so many complaints about newer omnibuses where it's they really just cram the event into the front and they put all the other stuff in the back and the stuff is kind of just one mini series at a time. And if you're going to give us a big, big book with this event like and, and just give us a TOC or sometimes they don't even have a table of contents, it becomes really hard to appreciate the event at all. It's just a bunch of trades glued together. Like give us some extra value, especially because you know that these days the editors somewhere have a list of how these things all go in sequence. If you're not going to give it to the in the book in sequence, at least let us have that editorial note that the editor somewhere in Marvel has to tell us the way that they were thinking about it being in order. So I think this is actually, it's its really weirdly a best case scenario. I think they put the primary story in the perfect order, the way it should be. They put in every possible tie-in and they put all the tie-ins in, in the best reading order instead of kind of just alphabetizing them and putting them by date. This is a best case scenario and I'm, I'm happy to have it to complete this trilogy. Now let's look at the bonus material, shall we? Also, I want to take a look at one of those Alpha Flight issues that's like extra or material from. There's a lot of different reasons that they'll do a material from when they collect something like this. Sometimes it means like a page, okay? Sometimes it means that issue had multiple stories and they're not collecting the second story. Sometimes it means just quote unquote subplot pages. It looks like this Alpha Flight issue must have had two stories because it has a, I mean, it has a beginning with like the credits and everything, and it has an end that says it begins next issue, the most shocking Alpha Flight story of all. It's really cool to see Alpha Flight in this oversized format, actually. Um, I'm pretty, pretty excited about it. So that answers that. Does it have much bonus or extra material? I don't think so, man. Oh, no, no. I just already divided it right there. So there's a house. It starts out with this house ad. And let's see what else, shall we? Uh, or actually, maybe it wasn't just a, Yeah, it's, it's probably... It's from Marvel Preview, so it wasn't just a house ad. It was actually a feature. And it kind of talks about all of the books that are going to participate. 
Then there's a Marvel Age. I'm almost certain I have this issue of Marvel Age, actually. There's a Marvel Age article on a, a composition on the conclusion of the cosmic crossover, trying to trip me up with a tongue twister all of these years later. And then there's some, oh, this is neat. There's a board game. How cool is that? I mean, I guess you're not going to really play it here in, in the book, but it has the rules and everything. That's neat. And then it has, uh, you know, some Marvel swimsuit issues. Everybody, everybody needs a little break in the middle of a cosmic saga. And, uh, and then we get to some house ads for Infinity Crusade and just a few black and white pages. So it's not the most extra materials I've ever seen in an omnibus, but for one of these big event books that has a whole range of material, in it, that, that's a fun amount of stuff. I really like when they take these Marvel Age articles. You know, you kind of wish with all these anthologized Marvel series like Marvel Comics Presents with its short stories like Marvel Age that had articles about Marvel itself. You kind of wish that before they went into any reprint format, whether that's omnibus or epic or whatever, that somebody just sat down with all the issues and like a scissors and just cut them up and put them into stacks based on like what they should go with and spread them out. Like I would, I, it's cool that there's Marvel Age stuff in this. I really love that the X-Men, New Mutants, and Excalibur omnibuses recently have had Marvel Age material in the back. I think that's really neat. I think it's cool that it's comprehensively like finding its way out as bonus materials. So look, I have never read this front to cover to back cover uh, because the X-Men appeared in it, but they appeared in it incidentally. You'll notice that none of the books I read are X books that this tied into. And that was the case for all three of these cosmic sagas. Although the X-Men appear, I saw X Factor in here a lot. I kept seeing Strong Guy, like every darn page, plus Wolverine, of course. So the X-Men characters participated, but the actual X-Men books gave it no hint of that whatsoever. So I never had these as floppies. I've never read them before. And once um, they announced Infinity War, I'm like, well, I might as well just wait for the Infinity Crusade on this to come out before I read all of them. And here it is. So I am pretty excited to sit down and read these. I, should I read them for the channel? Should I try Try to convince Tyler or Free or Harry or, or some other poor unfortunate soul to read them with me? Maybe. And maybe that could be a lot of fun. So if you want to see that, definitely leave a comment. The other cool thing to say is I have reached the bottom of that huge haul pile that I kept talking about over the course of many, many episodes and months now. This was the last from that pile of hauls that had been accumulated that I was kind of waiting for. And actually, I, I worked my way all the way through them, including that last haul I talked about last week, um, while I was still waiting for this. And then this finally, finally arrived. So now I'm finally kind of caught up to the present of hauls. And I already have a really good one that's just come in and I'm really excited to share it with you next time because it actually has a rare modern book that I allowed into my collection. Usually I don't buy physical format books of comics that came out, out after 2015, but I did here and it is James Tiny and the Fourth's Wind. So I will tell you all about that and the other books in this order when I come back next here on Haul Around the World. And until I get to see you again, I hope that you are well. <laughs>